Okay, in this video on photo interpretation for the Cambridge IGCC Geography paper, I'll be taking you through the theme of rivers. So, when interpreting a photo, just as a recap what we have to do, we need to give simple descriptions of human and physical landscapes and any geographical phenomena that we can see in the photographs, aerial photogra photogra photo photographs, satellite images, GIS. So, throughout this video, I'll be taking you through uh, breakdown of example questions, what theory, what points you need to consider when looking at photographs, um, giving you some exam, and then through that I'll be answering some example exam responses, and obviously giving you some examples to practice from. So remember, with these are generally nine times out of ten describe questions, and the number of marks indicate the number of unique, individual, different observation features, points that need to be made. So rivers. When you're looking at these photographs, really require you to take a look at the long profile and have a memory of that. So you remember that the long profile we can divide up into the upper, middle, and lower course. We've got the landforms that we can find at the various points along the river. And then we have to work out the characteristic of that river at a particular point. So we know that the width, depth, the cross-sectional area, velocity, and discharge increase with distance from the source, and we know that the gradient, pebble size, and shape decreases with distance from the source. Once we know that, it makes it a lot easier for us to identify certain things within the river. You can have a point to say, this is in the upper course because I can see valleys, interlocking spurs, and V-shaped valleys. We also need to recognize the processes that occur. So we know that in the upper course, there's more vertical erosion, traction, and saltation. As you progress downstream, it, vertical erosion turns into lateral erosion, Traction and saltation turns into suspension, and the load side becomes smoother and smaller. And so by the time we get to the lower course, there's more deposition, some lateral erosion, and a large amount of load, but that's very fine material. And then from that, we can work out the shape of the valley. So you can see my badly drawn diagrams here, that the valley becomes more V-shaped, U, and then very wide and relatively flat. And so when we come back to this, you can see that the channel shape is there tends to be shallow water and a narrow channel, deeper water and a wider channel, and then the channel is deepest and widest. The valley itself is V-shaped, almost U-shaped, and then we've got flat floodplains. And then also when looking at a photograph, there's other things to consider, such as vegetation tape, type, sorry, number of valleys, bare rock present, etc. So let's take a question here. So describe the relief features of each valley. So we've got figure 4.1 here. I can say that it's probably, uh, so if I, you know, focusing on reliefs, I'm talking about the height and shape of the lands, nothing else. So I can see that there is a wide valley floor. There's flat land between lakes. There's some steep sides along the edges. And so if I was going to put that into a description, I can see that it has a wide valley floor surrounded by steep sides and it's U-shaped. Um, between the two lakes, flat land separates them. So again, I've looked at that part where I have to look at the relief. So what words can I use to describe relief? What, how can I describe the, shape, the land that I can see? So we've got some points there. Next one, we can see that it's very narrow valley floor with V-shaped, clear V-shapes. We've got some interlocking spurs. And the slopes are very steep and straight. So I can put that one into a paragraph, check the mark scheme, and there we go. So here you go. Here's some practice as a practice question for you. So what I like you to do is have a look at the valley, uh, look at the question, sorry, you can see what it does, break it down. This is for eight marks. Pause the video, give it a go, and then continue on the video to see if you got right. So thank you for watching. If you really appreciate these videos, check out my other videos on photograph interpretation, map skills, and everything else, and subscribe and like and share if you think your other fellow colleagues would appreciate this video. Thank you.